Hi, welcome to Shuey's Barbecue, where you'll learn the tips and tricks to master your grill. Today, we're going to go through the different charcoal setups in a 57 centimeter Weber kettle. So, let's get into it. So, you're confused with all the information out there on how to set up a 57 Weber kettle, okay? And I understand it. People out there saying you should be using a snake, use the minion, and all the while in your head, all you're thinking is, is it even legal to burn a snake? And what did the little yellow guy in overalls ever do to me that I'm going to throw him in a fire? Okay, never fear, grab yourself a big man sized beer and we're going to run through the different setups that you can use that I know that work in your 57 centimeter Weber kettle. Okay, so let's get into it. Okay, firstly we're going to go over the different types of fuel, the briquettes and the charcoal, and we're best to use them. Okay, you can use both uh, for these for all these different methods, but say for the snake method that we're going that I'm going to show you, okay, you can use both charcoal and the briquettes, but the fact is the briquettes are actually going to give you a better outcome. Okay, so it's just knowing which fuel source to use for which cook and what's going to give you the best outcome. Okay? Okay, so I've set up the five Webers with uh, the different types of uh, charcoal setups that I regularly use, or used to at least. Okay, so from sort of beginner up to getting some accessories that help you along the way. So in this first one, um, I've got one basket of charcoal set up, okay? Um, and realistically that's for food that doesn't need a lot of temperature, okay, or if you want to do a reverse sear of a steak. So you've got a two zone cooking area. So you've got your direct heat directly under the charcoal and you've got your indirect heat on the opposite side of the cooking grate. Okay, now when you're using that setup and you have your lid on, your lid vent is going to be opposite the charcoal. So the charcoal is lit on this side, the vent for the lid is going to be over this side. This is going to draw that heat and any smoke that you might want to add over your food. Okay, so you've got to remember that. Okay, and you're realistically looking at, on the indirect cooking side, about 150 degrees Celsius. Okay, that's roughly what I get. Okay, so you've also then got the option of using the baskets to use two baskets. Okay, and um, that sort of setup is more for your roasts um, or whole fish. So you'll have the one basket on one side, the second basket on the opposite side. You'll lay your food directly in the middle, okay? And um, your vents, so instead of going on, on either side this way, they'll be right in the middle. So you'll start the vent on one side, right in the middle, and halfway through the cook over here. And it just gives that drawing of the hot air or any smoke that you put on evenly over your cook. Okay, and using that sort of a setup, you're probably getting up near the 200 degrees Celsius. Okay, so as I said, for that, that roasting factor um, for your big cuts of meat or your whole fish. All right, so then we move over to this setup. Okay, and this is what's commonly used as the minion method. So a big pile of charcoal, some lit ones and we'll put about 12 to get this going okay and it, it sort of acts like a fuse and so that those lit charcoal will eventually catch on to the unlit charcoals and start burning across okay and um, realistically uh, it's a, a good setup for low and slow um, so if you want to cook anywhere from say 107 degrees Celsius up to about the 135 degrees Celsius. You just have to be wary that because there's a, a, a flame there, your, your meat is susceptible to getting hot spots, okay, from that direct fire. So I know I've used baffles making a bit of aluminium foil when I first started out, okay, but it, it is a good um, setup and it, it, it can be quite stable. Moving over to this one, and this is more commonly used than the minion method these days. So this one is the snake method, okay? 
Um, same as a minion, so you're going to start off with about 12 lit briquettes and put them at the end of the, the, um, your fuse, um, is what we tend to call it. Um, and you're going to put uh, one piece of wood on top of the lit charcoal and um, then your lit charcoal is effectively going to catch fire to the rest of it. Now, take time to set this up. I see so many people throwing in those briquettes, okay? It takes another minute or so to actually set it up nice and neat. And the actual meter that you set it up, okay, the actual more uniform burn that you're going to actually get, okay? So you've got to remember that. Now, I know a lot of people say they don't like banking the charcoal directly on the porcelain, but it's a very small hot spot. If you're going to light a whole chimney full of charcoal and put it up against the enamel, yes, that can become a problem, but we're talking a handful, and that hot spot gradually moves around. So, and remember that it moves around, so you need to adjust your cooking rate and slowly turn that around. So, your fuse is starting on this side. Remember that your lid vent is on the opposite side of where your charcoal is, and you have to slowly adjust that. But, very stable, okay? Unless you start getting a lot of crosswinds, which I do in my backyard, I get a lot of crosswinds. Once the sun comes over, it starts affecting the temps. So you, you may have to play around with those vents just a little bit, okay? But still a great setup. Over here, we have what a lot of people have heard of or similar versions of, but we have the kettle cone. Um, now, what we have here is something that's going to give us a high indirect heat, okay? So, the kettle cone itself, it forces the heat up to the top of the lid, curves around naturally with the shape of the lid, around to the outer part of our cooking grates, okay? So, in doing so, we're effectively air frying because I'm getting temperatures around the 230 degrees Celsius out of most of my livers, okay? Um, they all vary a little bit in, in what sort of temp I'm getting out of them. But, I mean, it's my go-to for wings, um, chops, sausages. So, it's, as I said, it's high indirect heat. So, it effectively it's my go-to for doing my standard grilling and barbecuing, okay? Um, you can also turn the kettle cone upside down um, and therefore get a slightly bigger grilling surface if you want. Um, so if you wanted to char up some vegetables or something like that. And um, being quite thick, they usually sell them in a mild steel. I'm lucky enough that I actually grabbed one in stainless. It actually retains the heat, okay? So I'm finding, um, I'm getting, say, chicken wings done in about 30 minutes um, without any sauce going on to them, but about 30 minutes just for a seasoned chicken wing, okay? And I can put in about three sets of chicken wings before I have to start adjusting um, my temperature, okay? Um, being the fact that I'll, I'll probably, if I want to put in, say, a fourth one, I'll probably blow out to about 35, maybe even 40 uh, minutes. Um, depending on, on the day, the temperature and so forth. Um, but being the fact that it is such a thick metal, it actually acts as a bit of a heat sink. Um, so when you take your lid off quickly, put it back on, as opposed to not having a heat sink, um, your temperature rises to the cooking temperature quickly again. Okay, now we move over to the, and you can see the dog's all excited about it. Um, now we move over to the JG barbecue. Okay, now I know Justin, just like um, Trav and Tan with the kettle cone, um, put a lot of research and time and effort into these products. I and mean, this is all laser cut to fit this Weber perfectly. And he makes them for different sizes, just as the kettle cone, they make theirs for different sizes. Okay. What this does, is this does away with the snake and the minion method. But beyond that, this is a massive piece of mild steel. Once that gets to temp, that is a super heat sink. Okay, so you want to check 
a brisket or a pork shoulder that you put into pulled pork or ribs. Most people, they take the lid off, they check, they give it a spritz, they put the lid back on, okay, and the Weber takes a while to get back up to 10. Not with this thing, it, it's actually up within minutes, okay? So, same deal as those, it's like a fuse. You'll leave a spot on one side for about 12 um, lit briquettes to go into it, okay? And it will burn across. Or charcoal, if you will. Um, I tend to use a lot of briquettes in my cooks, um, but it's the same effective wick that you're using with the Minion and the Snake Method, but now with a heat sink, okay? And this thing is rock solid, stable. You get less fluctuation with the wind, as you do with the other two methods, less fluctuation with the outside ambient tip, okay? So you're effectively using that fused style system, you're going to get those 107 to 135 degrees Celsius sort of range, you can cook in that range, um, and, it, and, it, and it holds it quite steadily. Um, now he's actually designed this, it'll actually fit a, um, a full charcoal basket in it, so you can put dump a whole chimney full or a half chimney full of lit charcoal in there, and with the mild steel, once that gets to temp, you're getting up to roasting temperatures, um, that 200 degrees sort of Celsius mark. Um, he does recommend you use a basket, don't dump a whole or half basket full of lit charcoal right up against the edge of your weather, as I touch base down there, it's, it's generally not great for, okay? But again, you'll put your wood, you've got wood and you'll place one, two and three on, on your charcoal, It'll slowly go across, burn, get the smoky flavour and the same with this one, unlike in the snake where you've got to keep turning the lid, in the mini method, over here, here's your heat source, your vent goes there and stays there, okay? So, you also then go down to your basket setup, your two zone cooking, high direct, low indirect, high direct, low indirect, okay? Very versatile. These two units, the kettle cone and these JG barbecue offset plates, weekly I use these things. I think everyone knows how many wings I cook. I've already put up two videos and I've only put up seven videos so far. And um, knowing that I was doing this charcoal 101, um, I should have grabbed some more wings. So I've got these set up. So I'm actually going to get some wings on today. Okay. But that is the basis, your very basic setup of how you can use a Weber kettle and how you set it up. All right. So I think we go on to a bit of vent control because I think if some of you don't understand that, I think sometimes, again, there's the wrong information out there. So, grab another beer. I'm going to finish this one. And then we can um, get into some vent control. All right, it's time to touch base on vent control. Um, the, like charcoal, there's a lot of misinformation out there. Okay, what works for one doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work for another. I own on average around about 50 Webers, okay? Now, oh, in that I own around 20, 25, 57 centimetre Weber kettles, okay? And they all react differently to temperature, the charcoal that goes into them, okay? And the vent settings, okay? There's the daisy wheel with the three vents, the one touch cleaning system. Does it have an ash pan or does it have the ash can? They all draw oxygen differently, okay? Even if you've got two identical um, Webers with a one-touch cleaning system, how flush do those blades on that one-flush cleaning system touch the bowl, okay? So I might have mine halfway open and you have yours halfway open, mine's flush, yours isn't, 
okay, and you're wondering why you're getting hotter temps, it's because you're allowing in more oxygen, okay. So as I always, always stress, light the fuel, put it in your barbecue, and then master your grill. I can give you some rough recommendations, and those rough recommendations is, light your fuel, when you're getting around that 30 to 50 degrees Celsius off your target temperature, now I say 30 to 50, because 30 on a cold day, 50 on a really hot day, okay? You start closing down those vents, okay? Or the box just on the bowl, leave the lid one open, okay? And when you close them down, you'll see that the, the, the speed of the rise in the temp will slow down, okay? And it will stabilize after about that 20 to 30 minute mark, depending on all the factors, humidity, um, the ambient temperature outside, what sort of charcoal you're using, okay? All those factors come into it, okay? But when you master your grill, okay, and you master the charcoal that you're using, you'll know when to start closing your vents down and where to close them down to, okay? But leave that top one open, okay? Let's get that smoke, let's get that air. So you just want that circulation and draw that hot air over our food and out, okay? Okay, after all of that information, so charcoal setups, what type of charcoal, the vent settings, okay, what's my go-to? Okay, I've already touched base on the kettle cone and the JG barbecue offset plate, okay, but specifically, what cooks do I use each one for? Well, if I want to do hot and fast wings, chops, sausages, lamb koftas, garlic bread, all these hot and fast type cooks, it's that kettle cone. I'm reaching for that every time I'm using it weekly. Okay, but if I want to do low and slow, it has to be that JG barbecue offset plate. Okay, the other thing I didn't touch base on when we went through the charcoals, if I put the same amount of fuel that I use in a minion and a snake method into that JG barbecue offset plate, I've actually got fuel left over when that JG barbecue offset plates finished cooking and these two, the snake and the minion, have burnt out, okay? So it actually uses less fuel and that'll be a factor because of that heat sink factor, okay? Remember, you're, you're closing your vents down to a certain heat and that that mild steel, that thick mild steel is carrying a lot of heat so you're not relying all of it on the charcoal, okay? So for I think $110 or $120, whatever it goes for retail these days, okay, you think of how much charcoal and briquettes cost, okay, that thing is more than going to pay for itself quite quickly if you like to do a lot of low and slow, okay. Now, the only time I vary from those two sort of things is, and I know Juzzy's gonna probably send me a nasty message on this, but this is how I cook, okay, uh, for steaks and just steaks alone, okay, I still use one basket, I cook on the indirect side, a little bit of wood there to smoke, okay, take it off when it gets to the temperature, the internal temp that I like for a rest. I'll put those charcoals into a kettle cone, okay, and maybe top it up a little bit more, and um, once the steak's had a 10-15 minute rest, I'll put it over that kettle cone for a sear, okay, um, that's how I do it. As for roast, it was the two basket system until, now I didn't show this as a setup because it's not readily available. You actually have to order it specifically off JG Barbecue, but that offset plate, he makes a custom double sided one, okay? And that is my go to for roast now. And I will do another video of that. Um, with a rotisserie, um, it, the thing is magic. I mean, you think of the, the fuel you're saving on that. Imagine if you do roasts all the time, okay? The amount of fuel you're going to save by using a double-sided offset plate, okay? But that's it. That's my arsenal. A JG barbecue offset plate, a double-sided JG barbecue offset plate, a kettle cone, 
and one basket. That's it. That's what I use. Okay, um, and out of those, um, I generally use them weekly. Okay, I'm not doing steaks every week. Um, it's mainly for the family cook. So it's the Kettle Cone uh, JD Barbecue Offset Plate. So, cheers. So if I was going to throw out a little bit of advice for anyone wanting to get into cooking on a Weber, it would be grab yourself a kettle cone and grab yourself a JG barbecue offset plate. Okay? Once I grabbed those two items, my cooking went through the roof. Okay, they made it easier. Okay. Um, I'm not sponsored or endorsed by them in any way, shape or form. I just love the product. Um, so Take it from me, I use them weekly, okay, and um, I give them a good workout, so um, they just they just put your cooking through the roof, so they really will. I mean, you'll amaze family and friends when they come around and see how easy it is. Um, when they're running back and forth checking the Webers and changing the events, and you're just like, bang, bang, set, done, set, nah, should you not check that? Nah, get me another beer, okay, and that's how good they are, okay? so. Remember, if you do like this video, give me the thumbs up. If you didn't like it, by all means, give me the thumbs down, okay? But the biggest thing is, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. The bell notification is going to let you know when I upload another video. So, I do appreciate you watching. Thank you very much. And um, I'll uh, go back to drinking my beer. And um, I've actually... Lick some charcoal, I'm gonna eat some chicken wings, so and I'm gonna use a kettle coat. Thanks everyone. Today we're gonna to go through the different set charcoal uh, today we're going to go through the different charcoal setups for the 57. Today we're gonna to go through the different setups of charcoal. Uh, today we're gonna to go through the different charcoal setups for the 57 Weber kettle. I don't know why I paused. Today, we're going to go through the different charcoal setups in the 57 Weber. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Shuey's Barbecue, where you'll learn the tips and tricks. Let's get into it. Get into it. Have a beer, that's what I'm doing. So, you're confused with. Oh, there's crows. I'm going to get a shotgun. You actually get a better um, uh, eye on uh, eye on eye on. I speak speak English. I don't even know if I pause on that. Oh, the beer though. Uh, so if I was going to hand out any sort of a don't don't shit there. Well, seriously, there's a whole yard. Go. So the best advice I could give is um, <laughs> have a beer, watch the birds, grow your lawns maybe. <laughs>